I think Adobe does have free trials. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to get familiar with Photoshop, you could certainly download the free trial and see if so. Um, so on to um, digital art. True. So. Your computer's couldn't read it. So I'm going to, since we're not going to be able to project mm -hmm. um, my drawing process onto the screen, I have, um, I'm going to actually show you a couple. Tell us the software that you use to create it. Oh, yes. So I, I created the software directly in this, I mean, I created this piece directly in this software. Which um, is Clip Which is Clip Studio, Studio Paint, yes. This is the paid, this is the Clip Studio Paint X, which is the middle grade um, mm -hmm. one that I bought. And uh, the pro version, which is the higher grade, it's usually used for animation, which is, yeah, you'll see a lot of, um, uh, a, a lot of pro so wrote softwares will upcharge because it says you can use it for animation. And I don't use it for, an I don't do animation, so I don't need that. But um, yes, yeah, so I use, I actually, um, this is my favorite, my favorite brush. Um, you can see I, uh, I was using it to write right here. But yes, it's called Design Pencil. Clip Studio Paint comes loaded, or every software you have, you will download, um, they will come loaded with a couple of different default brushes, and you can download plenty more. Let's see the Intoxicate set. Um, this is like a pencil, uh, like a kind of like, yeah, here I'll show you. Let's see if it will Does it let you rename the brushes? Oh yes, um, so you can rename the brushes, you can edit them. Sorry, I'm kind of like trying to, yes, you can edit them. You can change the default opacity, you can change the anti-aliasing, which is how pixelated it is. You can change the brush shape. Um, you don't, I'm, I wouldn't recommend changing the brush shape off of any brush, that any custom brush, because um, if you get rid of it, then you'll never find it again and it again, and the brush will never look the same. <laughs> so yes, I mean, yes. Yeah, yes, that's what you want to do. You want to you can copy and paste current brushes. You can do that in Photoshop, you can do that in Clip Studio Paint, you can do that in Procreate. Um, you can go online and down, there's a whole list for Clip Studio, especially. There's a lot of free brushes. Like for some, you'll see, will find like, oh, this is a good grass brush. Like you can download it and it'll like give you the imprint of grass that you can use for free. For Photoshop, um, there are a lot less free brushes. Or like, you know, you have to Real buy. Problem. Yeah, it's very commercialized. Again, another reason I don't really like Photoshop. <laughs> but yes, um, you can. Brush shape, brush tip, the direction. Um, so this is a bit of a like it's kind of a calligraphic brush. So um, it's not perfectly round. It's uh, you can I mean you can kind of see it here like the tip is um, kind of shaped like a line. And so that and Clip Studio Paint actually tracks which way my pen is tilting when I draw, mm. and um, it will change uh, the the thickness of the brush depending on. Um, which which way my pen is tilting. Basically like a calligraphy brush. And pressure. Yeah, and pressure. That's the other thing. So pressure and um, direction. Uh, you can see, yep, yeah, angle. So angle, you can change the angle or you can have it based on the tilt of your pen. So if you actually buy, if you look at um, different tablets that you can buy, you'll see um, the resolution of the screen, you'll see the tilt, and you'll see the pressure level of the pen. Those are usually the things that will uh, advertised to you. But that's what that means. So the tilt, um, that means the software tracks which way your pen is tilting. And then, so we have stroke. Yep. You can, like, this is, um, this gets a little bit more technical um, because, again, like, when you have a brush, a textured brush like this, it works based off of an, an algorithm. Like, it's a small one, but again, it is an algorithm. So it just, it doesn't look too samey, essentially. It gives you the texture of I mean, this, is, this brush is called Design Pencil, so the algorithm is meant to give you the texture of a design pencil instead of just um, the flat texture, if that makes sense. Um, so yes, texture, uh, it's in Japanese, I can't read Japanese. Um, dual brush, brush chip, yeah, all of these different, every single one of the brushes that you can download and that come on design, that, that I mean, excuse me, that come as a default, you can download, you can edit, you can do all that stuff with. Oh, sorry, that was a lot. Okay, now let's get into some art, shall we? Mm -hmm. I am going to show you, so this is the original, um, so this is not the photo, or like the original, the finished piece. This is actually, this is actually the docu, the, the complete Clip Studio Paint document that I made it. So I could literally just go on my tablet and edit this, and like, this is basically the original file. So I was drawing on this, I, I was drawing this in this file like, <coughs> six months ago. 
So you can see the different layers we have. So that's the layers. This is why I really like layers, because you can decide if it's translucent or not. So I'm just gonna give you guys some examples. We have, there's my signature. Um, where are our, yep, see, some of these are translucent. And we also have the, ed, the color, I have a couple of color editing layers, as you can see. Um, let's see if I can find them. There we go. There we go. So, light overlay. It's kind of hard to see. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Good one. So, multiply. See, I added a shadow in the back. So, that's the other, the, other, the other thing about digital art is that you can go in between layers. So, say I already drew this dragon, but I thought the background was too light because the dragon is light. So, I went back and I put a multiply layer on, which basically makes the color darker. We also have a, oh, yep, the sunlight on the bridge. Um, yeah, you can go in and do that with digital art. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, Photoshop. Yeah. With photos. Yep, Photoshop, um, you but can do this. do you find it much easier to do the layering? You know, to find what you want to put on top and tell it that it's a new layer. What do you like paste, what, what, what do you mean? It's pasting and cutting basically. Like so the background you started with a blue background, you started with what? Um I started with a blue sketch background. Right. So and then you added a dragon picture and then you I drew this. You drew okay. Yes, I drew okay. all of this. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. So this is none of this is AI, none of this is like like for when I say so digital. You personally drew it. Okay. Yes. With I, your pen and ink. Mm -hmm. So, okay. um, so yeah, when I, when I say my digital art, I don't use AI, I don't use stock images, nothing like that. So um, everything is, even in like the tiny trees in the background, I drew those individually. Good. And that has... Um, yeah. What was this project for? What was your client for this? Oh, um, this was a personal project actually. Oh, okay. It's just um, the one I like best, so I decided to show it to you guys. Okay. But um, this is a piece of fan art for Breath of the Wild, um, a video game, and um, there's a, actually there's... There is a series, it's a series of three that I did as a portfolio piece, or a port three portfolio piece. Oh, pieces. nice. And that's cute. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yep. And all of these have different, let's see if I can find the last one. Yeah, sweet sideways. Yeah, sorry. This there is, it is. This oh. is one more problem of working on a laptop as opposed to a desktop. As all of these, there, there's something, I think each of these has like 90 something layers. Wow. Which is what happens when you get like yeah. a big illustration like this. Yeah. So, um, hmm? Could you group them? Uh, you can, but um, unless you combine, flatten the image itself, um, there's still the, the software still has to render them each individually, so you go back and change them if you want. And I did want to keep these available so I can change them. Because again, this was a personal project, and if I ever want to use it for um, a client, if I ever say, like, I want to use these flags, I can just go back. You can re-edit them. them easily. Yeah, I can re-edit them. If easily. you flatten it, you can't. Yeah. You know, I mean, group them in groups, like, put all your first layer in a group. Oh, yeah. and yes, I do. That's actually, yeah, there's a, this is all there's the line. group to it. But um, again, so with my laptop specifically, um, it has trouble, it doesn't have enough bandwidth to uh, maintain like so many layers. And again, I have to keep oh. this many layers in order to properly edit it. So I have a desktop, it's just um, oh, a laptop. The laptop is an aspect of Yeah, this is, this is basically my, my to-go sort of drawing software. Okay. But yeah, that's, um, those are some examples of my work. Um, nice. I can give you nice. some right. other ones. Thank you, thank you very much. And let me show See, you. I can't draw like that. I like the that's colors. My problem. And you just save those. Um, with all the layers, that, I mean, is it yep, taking I have, up a lot of... I have two versions, basically. Um, so in my laptop, I have all these saved to a cloud somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. And again, yeah, of course. Like, so every year... <laughs> yeah, of course. So every year, somewhere. I will take all of my files and I'll save them to a cloud. Yeah. And so these are, like, these are all 2023. Like, I made this yeah. in March, uh, April, and August, I think. So, um, so each, so each individual year is on my laptop, and then at the end of the year, I always uh -huh. save it onto it. But yeah, I do like to keep them um, because, again, like you can keep the assets, you can copy paste things, especially like if it's for a client work. If they buy, I mean, if they buy the full rights to the picture, yeah, then you yeah. don't have, you can't use them anymore, even if you're the artist. Yeah. But um, for this sort of stuff, um, 
Yeah, I, mean, I think it's a good portfolio piece. And yeah, then you, if they, if you do it for a client, you you give it to them. You give them the well, right to use it. It's sold. Yeah. What's common in the industry is called First American Rights. Mm -hmm. So you basically sell them, the, give them the right to the use rights. the image, mm -hmm. and then but you have the right to keep. Like the most common agreement is that you have the right to keep it in your portfolio. You just can't sell it. Sell it again. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sell sure, it. Sure. Well, you can sense. show it that this has been used. And yes, that makes sense. Someone's was using it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. Well, that's good. I'm, yeah, I've had a professor uh, talk about how you know. Um, <laughs> Every professor, art professor I've talked to has story, has like horror stories of how their one friend didn't read the contract mm -hmm. and now they don't have access to their picture anymore. Well, of course. Like they can't show it to anybody. But yes, in general. Um, oh, they can't even show it. Okay. Yeah, like they, it's like the whole file belongs to the company because that was, that was what the contract said. Right, right. But yes, that is, um, but yes, for digital art, yes, you can copy paste whatever you want. And there is art theft as a problem. But um, there are, yes, again, you can like contact. There are, like, for example, Twitter, you can contact support, all that sort of stuff. And with AI, okay, personally, there are, okay, there's two different, so, I'm sorry, I'm like rambling okay. a little bit, but, so there, there are two different camps with AI. There are ethical AI programs, which is where the artists agree, like, people specifically agree to put their art into the program, and then um, to see what, well, I mean, yes, essentially to see what comes out. I mean, it's an artistic tool, it's a tool that other people can borrow. There's also the unethical AI, which is mid-journey, basically any big AI, probably, like, usually um, that is art, stolen art. So basically what the AI does, it goes online, and the maker of the AI um, seeds, uh, teaches the AI with um, as many images as they can find, which are taken from the artist without permission to be used. And then um, they put it all in the AI, and the AI spits out basically the average photo. So with AI art, you're only going to get the average. Uh oh Oh, dear. Uh-oh. No. Uh, I mean, I was done. There it is. It's there. Oh, yep. Okay, cool. I don't know. So, but um, the other thing is, yeah, like a lot of, pretty much every one of those photos was used without permission. There was actually a... Um, uh, it's a bit of a funny anecdote. Um, Shutterstock, a big uh, right, stock. Yeah, I know it. So um, apparently, an AI they, they were able to sue um, the CEO of one of the AIs that created it because um, they had used so many Shutterstock. The AI had stolen so many Shutterstock images that it actually rendered the logo into the photo. Oh, oh yeah, they has them over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they can't um, steal Shutterstock. So that was very damning evidence. And then, uh, but yes, yeah, so AI is a uh, very dicey subject. And um, That's I. That's why we need to delete everything that we make. Right yes, immediately. Okay, immediately. there are filters. There is, a, supposedly, there is a filter. I forget what it's called, but you, if you look up anti AI filter, it changes the colors of your, um, of your, uh, your work um, mm -hmm. just so slightly so the AI has trouble recognizing it or um, memorizing uh, uh, it. Um, so that's hopefully going to become more common in recent in, in coming years. Oh, okay. But um, AI art, it's, I mean, I tag all my works with no AI, so I ask people, do not put, do not put this in AI, but in general, like, there's not much you can do. Well, right there. Delete. Delete. Yeah, but if you're posting, even, but today if we post, though, it's not in the best rendition. Yes, you, you want to do. copy and paste in. Someone can print it, you know. I mean, yeah. So yeah. one way to get around this is again, this is also easier on the website, um, the website servers, depending on which website you use. But if you if you scale down the image, like this is a lot of pixels in it. It's a very high quality image because it is the, the official image. But if I scaled this down, it would look more pixelated if you look up close. But um, it would be harder to copy. Right. And it would still look the same on a computer screen. And so, if you made it an inch, like, like this big, like this big, but yet visible, when they go to steal it, all they get is something like this. Oh, yeah. They can't use oh, it. They get a small image. You can make it as small as possible. If you make it too small, you can't see anything. Like, they can't, like, AI can't go on your computer and steal things. It's mostly, like, what is you post on Twitter it's or what you call it. Yeah, they have to put out there. But the yeah. quality on there. Yeah, you get, like, lower the quality is the better option. And then for, if you're selling prints, um, like physical prints, like you can have, like you can print them in high quality and just like have the announcement with a um, example image in low quality. But there's a couple, yeah, there's a couple different workarounds, and thankfully um, people are waking up to the problem yeah. nowadays. All right.
Yes. With, when you start your um, page, what resolution do you start at? Um, I have a couple of, that's a really good question, actually. I have a couple, um, so with Clip Studio Paint and with Photoshop and pretty much any software, you can use, you have, so I have uh, standard, which is 8.5 by 11, 350 pixels. 350. Yeah, 350. That's usually, um, I found that's a good baseline. It's like a good in-between between like being too big of a file versus not being good enough quality. So I usually uh, use 350 because uh, prints use uh, 75. And um, yeah. so like I can scale up and down as needed. And I also have like Square uh, Webtoon. That's, uh, 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 yeah, Clip Studio Paint actually has um, I think there's, uh, Did you create that webtoon or that came with the software? Oh, I created it. So everything under, yeah, under every <coughs> preset is gotcha. what I make. So um, this is, so for when I make the PAG uh, graphics, this is the size I use, 9 by 9, 300 pixels. Um, so yeah, that's what I, that's the standard. This is a, basically just a sketch page and you can put a paper color. So if you like to sketch um, on tailed paper, I can make the default paper color any color I want, essentially. I prefer white right now uh, because all of my sketchbooks are white, so that's easiest for me. But yes, yeah, so you can do different colors. You can put it in the file completely in gray or black and white. You can do comic pages for Clip Studio. Yeah, Clip Studio is really good for, and this is animation. Um, this isn't really, with my tier of software, this isn't really uh, useful, but um, it's definitely there. And yes, you can do different. Because Clip Studio Paint, in essence, originally, and I mean throughout the years, it has been a comic and manga making software. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different, like this is the border, like you have the bleed line, you have, you can like set it up like a book, um, that sort of thing. Um, Photoshop, you can do that too, yeah. but it's like you have to do a little bit more clicking through the menus to figure that out. And some, I'm sure Procreate, I don't know if Procreate, let's do that. But I mean, there's plenty of softwares that let you just like, is like, hey, this is a book, just load your images into it. So yeah, there's a lot of different things you could do with um, any, any amount of softwares you find on the side of the road. But yes, this is my typical illustration. I do, I also do comics. I don't really like to use the comic page just because um, the UI doesn't really fit with my comic making style, <laughs> so it's easier enough. It's easiest, it's easy enough for me to just use the illustration pages. So, I guess the last question is: Is your images when you sell them, what are they using them for? What's the end? Um, Going in a book or printing large scale? Or? I usually print them. Um, so far, I usually I sell my images as physical prints. Okay. And depending on the size of the prints, um, is the size of the resolution. So. You, you print from small to large. Yes, as okay. like as right now, I work as like on a commission basis. So like I can make a commit. It's like if somebody were to commission me to create a digital piece, I could just email it to them, and they would just have it, and like they would pay me like again like the, the general agreement is like you know, artistry. Dot com. That's that a joke. Okay. Yeah. So that is my um, cool. Oh yeah, this is a. I, I think I finished this in the new year, but I put it on my cloud. I didn't see that. Thank you so much for your suggestions and your questions. Like I'm glad we've been able to like get yeah, switching information is very fun. Oh, I love talking great. about the You did a great job. Thank Barbara, you. you really